welcome to Musings with me at Butterfly Effect for Happiness. I'm Lisa and I hope that wherever this finds you in your day, it generates critical thinking and discussion for those you love and care about. In this episode, I'm musing over the topic of boundaries. What are they? What does a bendy boundary look or feel like and how do we set them? And to clarify for those of you who are listening, Boundaries are the limits and rules we hold for ourselves and how we engage or relate to others, including our friends, family, work and other associates outside of our close circle. So, you know, like they impact how we allow other people to treat us, how we they behave when they are around us and what or how much they can expect from us. And we are the ones who dictate this to others by what we allow and how much we bend or strengthen our boundaries and these change depending on who it is as well you know like we may have bendier boundaries with the people um, who are within our family in comparison to how clear our, the boundaries are with people in our work or at sport or where those different places are um, or we may actually see it replicated in lots of areas of our, our, our lives. So if we're finding that we've got really bendy boundaries at home and we're feeling disrespected, then we're highly likely to see that actually out in the rest of the world as well with the way that other people treat us um, <clears throat> and how we allow ourselves to be treated. And if you're anything like me, then you've probably been more of a yes person um, and had trouble saying no, which ends up in you being a people pleaser with no boundaries or very few boundaries and, and they're really bendy. Um, for me, this came from a long held belief or fear of losing people around me and not being enough to keep them. Um, you know, after all, I needed to be needed to keep them around or so I thought. And for a long time, I knew I was people pleasing. But I still couldn't say no or have boundaries that took care of myself. And for me, I could theorize until the cows come home about when all of this was set into my belief system. But the fact is that I am now consciously aware of it and, it, and can put into practice my revised boundaries. So for a super long time, I had really bendy boundaries and I often made myself available to support others, to keep friendships, to keep the peace with family or friends. Because you know what? Why who betide those who rock the boat? And I'm not even going to go into confrontation and difficult conversations. That's a whole other podcast. So you may recognize some of these for yourself. These are things that I was doing with my bendy boundaries. So listen in see if any of them fit for you and whether you recognize any of them like um number one i would say yes when i really really wanted to say no and that um that really bent my boundaries i needed to be saying no more often to take care of myself um i you might be giving and giving and giving until you end up sick and that might look like um, over volunteering, over availability, over extending yourself for others. Um, and it was definitely something that I was doing. Um, the, another thing was I felt an undercurrent of anger all the time. Not massive anger, but just like this constant pissed off feeling. And it would show up when I was driving, if I dropped something. Um, you know, just like that oh, feeling all the time underneath everything else. Um, and it would expand into feeling resentful and angry with people that I had been over accommodating or over giving to. Um, you might feel like you have to resort to passive aggressive behavior because you can't ask for what you need or want. So maybe like myself in the past, asking for what you needed got you cut off, got you abandoned by the group, or ostracized. You Maybe you are the one everyone comes to when they need something. 
But where are they when you need them? Where is the give and take? Are you doing more giving and they're doing more taking? Where in your life are you noticing that? Is it a sometimes thing or is it quite regular? Um, maybe you can never let other people down, even when you are sick, exhausted or way too busy and you still get it done. You have to get it done. And that was definitely something that showed up for me. Even when I was totally wiped out, I still had to get it done. Relationships might tend to be difficult for you. They were for me and um, lots of drama. I used to get sucked into other people's drama and ended up taking it on. And it, instead of it being not my circus, not my monkeys, it was... <laughs> everyone's circus and everyone's monkeys I would have everyone's kids so that they could keep their lives on track and by the way I have no issues with the kids I take full responsibility for my choices around my need to be needed um, but more on drama and emotional set points in another episode um, maybe you are often tired and without an obvious reason, it's not like you've gone for a run, it's not like you've been working hardcore, um, but this is because it's exhausting giving to everybody else first. And it means you are left to last and then you have to fit all of your own stuff in around everyone else and their needs. I did this with cake decorating. Um, people would drop in um, and I did it also later on working from home with coaching and other home-based business things. Um, that seems to give an indication to everybody that you are constantly available for drop-ins. And I couldn't say, sorry, I'm working right now. I would let everybody come and there'd be drop, you know, like people dumping their stuff that they needed to offload and I would listen and I was you know grateful that I was so grateful that they chose me to come and talk to and yet I was parking all of my stuff and even when they would say oh look have you got things to you oh no 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 you know and that's where I have to take responsibility for allowing that to be a situation um, maybe you've lost a sense of yourself this is because you end up living for everyone else and their needs and then you come up blank when anyone asks you what it is that you want out of life. What is your passion? What is your buzz? Um, what is your bliss? You, you may feel like, and I know this was true for me, that I had no sense of purpose outside of doing for everyone else. And it can leave you feeling like, well, what's the point? Um, which actually also can lead to a level of depression, um, which it did for me. You just, and on a side note, depression in metaphysical terms is actually anger about the past. And it was definitely something that was true for me. I was really angry that... I parked my career, I had parked my dreams, I had parked my goals for my children and, and that was fine. However, I'd lost that sense of purpose as they started to get their own lives as well and I filled that gap with doing for everybody else. Um, for a while, I didn't even want to decide what dinner would be if we went out, never mind what I really wanted to be doing in my career. I was constantly trying to please everyone else until I got sick, and that all changed. It had to change. I had to care for myself, um, you know, and part of that was guilt and anxiety. It plagued me all the time. This might be something that you are dealing with, guilt and anxiety, it's some of what contributed to my panic attacks and anxiety, um, along with other lifestyle choices. I would feel anxious about how, what and when I was going to be able to get things done. And I would feel massive guilt if I wasn't able or couldn't do something, or I wasn't available. I was even baking and decorating cakes 
into the late hours of the night because a friend would ask last minute for a cake. And I couldn't say no or let someone down. And that also was partly ego in that, um, which is a whole other thing around my cake decorating and what that brought up for me. Um, because it, it, it gave me a buzz when it was seen and when they were so happy with it. But all the way up to that, I would be stressed and at the expense of myself. And I would drop off the cake and then I'd crash and burn. Um, another thing, you may feel disrespected a lot of the time. So, you know, when we allow others to constantly take advantage of us, speak disrespectfully to us, leave us out of important events or decisions without speaking up, then we're showing them how to treat us. We are teaching everyone outside of ourselves how to treat us. And as with everything else in our lives, we are showing our children how to treat us and how to engage in relationships outside of our relationship with them. So if nothing else, if your children are showing signs of bendy boundaries, then they have learned that somewhere. And we are usually the ones they've learned it from. So the next question then is, how can we change this? And I definitely would not recommend doing it the way I did, although you may already be there, especially if you're listening to this. Um, I got my School of Hard Knocks lesson by getting extremely sick, as I've mentioned previously, and having to do some massive mental overhauls um, internally and really looking at the whys and whens and my beliefs around why I was always available to everybody and why I didn't have those boundaries around what I would or would not do. But you can begin, and I need to pop a disclaimer in here because there is no magic pill. Um, so many times people want a magic pill. I'm not waving any magic wand. There is no Harry Potter in here. Um, but you can begin by becoming aware of where you are doing it. How many of those things I mentioned before are you bendy boundary on? currently in your current reality and I'd recommend going back and listening to that little bit again and really thinking about how each one might show up for you. Get a pen and paper and make a line down the middle so it doesn't matter like what size that paper is um, but if you've got a few then you probably want it to be a bit bigger Get that paper on one side, if you fold it in half or draw a line down the middle, on one side, really think about if you do that thing, if it is that you say um, yes when you should say no, or want to say no, or if it's um, anxiety and guilt, or whatever it is of those things that you feel like you do, put it down on one side and write down the indicator or where you do that in your life. Is it at home? Is it at work? Is it is it over a multitude of areas that you do it? Or is it with a specific person? Then on the other side, write one thing that you could do to change that. One thing, just one thing that you could say no to, or one way you could change it or respond to it. And then commit to, over the next month, think of it like a science experiment, do one of them each time that thing comes up. See how that changes. See how that shifts the responses and the people around you. Um, and just see how it works. And then if you get flow on that one, have a go at adding in another one. Not deleting the other one, but adding in another one so that you start to really get clear on your boundaries and what you will or will not do. Um, and here are some other options that you could try. Just stop. Stop when someone asks you to do something. Take a breath and just think or feel into whether you really want to be doing this. Yes or no. 
and really check in with yourself. Ask yourself, do I really want to do this? What makes me say or want to say yes or no? And, and then do a little bit of a game of if I say yes, then how will, how will it impact me? If I say no, then what will happen if I don't? You could even play what's the worst thing that could happen. So you can play a little bit of a game around, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the best thing that could happen? And record them. Journaling is such a brilliant way to get your deeper thoughts onto paper for you to read them in a conscious space, a space where you can really consider how something will impact you. Um, and you don't even have to have paper. You could get your computer and um, type it out. Do one on one side and on the other side. Or um, what's the worst thing that could happen? Or what's the best thing that could happen? Because the thing is that when it stays up in your head, it just goes round and round and round. And you don't really get the ability to have it in front of you so that you can really look at it in a conscious way. So if you can just get those thoughts down and write them out in, in whatever way that works for you, you then have it in a visual sense in front of you where you can look at it and really look at it and go, oh, okay, well, yeah, that is what I do. Okay, so this is what I can be doing and shifting that, that view around it. Um, you might like to play another game, I do this because. I do this because and keep going with each answer until you get to why you really do it. I do this because if I don't, they won't have anyone else to do it. You know what? Is that really true? Have they tried anyone else or are you first port of call? Because they've never had to find out if they need to get somebody else. Um... I do this because it makes me feel important. I do this because that way I stay part of the group. I do this because um, it's easier to say yes than to deal with the fallout if I say no. And, ha and the thing is that if we do start to say no, yeah, there might be fallout in, the big t in the, that first step. But when people realize that you're not always going to be the yes person, they will not pressure you all the time to be the only person that they ask. Um, you could practice saying no in different ways. It's like being an actor in running lines, right? So that when you need to use them, they're much easier to say. They help for times when you may feel guilted into doing something you'd rather not do and want to say no. Um, say you need some extra time to practice. You could say, let me check my calendar and I'll get back to you. Or um, let me think about it. And this gives you some time to check if you can or cannot commit or if you even want to commit. You could say, no thanks, I can't make that. No explanation. They don't have to have an explanation of why. You can just say, no thanks, I can't make that this time. Um... Sorry, I'm busy that day. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm actually busy that day. And yes, time to yourself is a priority. If you have trouble with self-time, go and listen to my podcast on when everyone else comes first. Sorry, that doesn't really interest me. And that's okay. You're allowed to not be interested. Um, I can do that, but I only have X amount of time. Set an alarm too. So that equals not having any resent. Um, though the first few times it may equal a level of guilt, but practice makes pride in yourself. Um, and by doing the, I can do that, but I have an, this amount of time, then that gives you a set space. You set the alarm so that you know five minutes before you really need to leave, you're saying bye and that you can get 
out and go and do the other things that you really need to be doing that might be in your business or it might be work or it might be um, housework or it might just be sitting and having space to yourself when we keep giving to everybody else and we're sitting there and yeah we're enjoying ourselves at the time but often I would find on the way on the drive home it's like oh my god why did I sit there for so long I now have to squeeze these hours of work into this amount of time before the kids get home or before the whatever else or before my client turns up and I've used up this time doing things for other people. Um, you could offer an alternative if you do want to do something but the timing is not quite right for you. Thanks for the invite or thanks for thinking of me but the only time I have available is um, no thanks, I don't feel up to it. And for those who try to guilt you into saying yes, thanks for asking or thanks for offering, but my answer isn't changing. And be really clear in that. Thanks for offering, but my, uh, my answer's not changing. And remember, like I said before, it takes practice to stop what you've been doing on automatic pilot and what has been a habit for you. Plus, it can feel really uncomfortable saying no at first. It comes into that FOMO thing, like fear of missing out. What if you say no and then they don't ask again? And other internal dialogue might show up. What if I disappoint them? What if I let them down? What if I'm no longer part of the group? What if my kid gets into trouble? What if they um, choose not to come home? And lots of other things that go on for us in our heads as people pleasers. And remember your time and your well-being is as important as theirs. And we teach other people how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves. You know, if we ask how high when they ask us to jump, they will expect us to be their personal Olympian. It is our responsibility to create our boundaries not for others to create them for us. When we begin to show ourselves the same respect that we show others, then we set in place those guidelines for how others need to respect us too. And the bonus of all of this is that our children see how we are setting those markers and they can begin to do it for themselves as well. And they may even begin to show you some more respect too. Or at least we can always hope. And on that note, it is definitely time for me to wind this up. And I'll leave you with this thought. Some people we feel uplifted afterwards. And others we feel absolutely drained. This is how we know what the energetic exchange was like. Uplifting or draining. So we can walk away or disengage from those we feel drained by until we can be in a space to sit with them and be okay. So with that in mind, what boundaries will you choose to make a difference in your life and the lives of those around you? And as always... May this at land with the intention that it was meant with, with love, with understanding, and with a good dose of when the bloop are you going to do it, because tomorrow never comes. And I'm just sending out masses of love for you today, either in the space that you are about to start your day, in the space that you are ending your day or wherever you are in between. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I'll talk to you soon.